Hi, welcome to Allied Live on YouTube today. Um, my name is Jamie Rosenberger, Product Manager at Allied Machine, and we're going to be going over what you need to know about thread milling. All right, first off, I'm going to take you through a walk on our, um, our thread milling pocket guide that we have. So we're going to walk through this. We're going to talk a few things about thread milling just to get you familiar with it. And then today we're going to have four demos for you uh, just to get you familiar with using a thread mill. So first off, in our pocket guide, we have what we have to offer, which is solid carbide thread mills and indexable thread mills. We have a performance line, the AccuThread, and we also have a value line, which is the Thread Mills USA. You're going to want to check out Instacode. Instacode is going to help you write that program. A, a lot of times, people with thread milling, they're a little intimidated about writing the program itself. Instacode is going to go through and generate the program for you. So you pick the item number, you can walk through and pick the material that you're machining, how deep you need to go, and it's going to create that G-code program for you. I highly recommend taking a look at that. Next, thread milling is actually very basic. A lot of times, like I said, people can be intimidated by it, but thread milling is nothing more than an end mill with a form on it. So you're just milling in that form in your part. That form just so happens to be a thread form. That's a UN or an ISO or an NPT. So all it is is an end mill with a form that you're milling into your material. Very simple. We're going to show you that today in our demonstrations. We're going to walk through how you can use it for different applications and how it can bring you benefits versus tapping. Next, the pocket guide is also going to walk through different benefits of thread milling. So let's run through a couple of these real quick. First things first, with thread milling, you can take and compensate that, that tool programmed path just like you would with an end mill. So you can remove a little bit more material at a time. You can keep expanding that diameter until you get it right on size. So instead of having just one chance to go into the part and make those threads, you're able to continue to work uh, or whittle away a little bit more material to get you right on size. That is excellent whenever you're working with more expensive parts, larger diameters, and sometimes you just don't want to risk wrapping out that part. No more broken taps. So that's kind of playing right into the, the, the fact that you can use cutter compensation in your machine to be able to make that diameter larger. With a the tap, there's a lot of forces because all edges of that, that tap are being engaged into the part, meaning that there's a lot of cutting force happening. And if that material is a little bit difficult to machine, chips aren't being formed properly, it can't snap the tap ultimately resulting in most likely a scrap part, or you'd have to go in and drill out the tap, be able to remove the tap, and whatever means. It does add cost to making that part, and ultimately downtime for your machine. Last, you can do multiple diameters. Since it is just a program tool path, if you're doing a, uh, a UN thread form with a 20 pitch, you can do a quarter 20, a half 20, you can do a 7 16 20, multiple diameters. All you need on that thread mill is 20 threads per inch and a UN form, and you're able to mill at any diameter. Left right hand threads. Once again, it's just the pitch. It's just a UN form, so you can do left hand or right hand just by changing the tool path that's programmed uh, in your G-code program. Internal versus external threads, same thing. It's just uh, a form on a thread mill that you're milling into the material. And last, lower horsepower required. This is going to come in handy whenever you're looking at larger thread diameters. You get into those three or four inch diameter threads, it is going to take a lot of horsepower to push that tap through the material. With a thread mill, still a small thread mill, and you're just milling in that three inch or that four inch diameter path. All right, next let's talk about uh, a little bit more of understanding how a thread mill works. So climb milling versus conventional milling. A lot of people have opinions about it. I'm going to talk about how climb milling is very beneficial for thread milling. So whenever you're looking at thread milling, having that tool come in, it's, it's just a matter of the direction of the teeth hitting into the material. If that tooth grabs in and bites into the material, it is going to want to stabilize a little bit more, therefore you have less deflection. You're gonna hear me talking about deflection several times because a thread mill is nothing more than a piece of solid carbide that has side pressure on it. So you can imagine carbide going against and having side pressure, it's deflection. That's your battle with thread milling. So all the things that you can do to help uh, remove the deflection from your application, that's what we're gonna talk about. Climb milling is just one of those things 
the way that the tooth bites into the material, it is going to help reduce deflection. Also, as it creates that chip, the cutter comes around and creates that chip, puts it behind it. Therefore, those hot chips that are coming off, they're out of the cutter's tool path. With conventional milling, you are taking and having those chips be pushed in front of the tool path. Therefore, you're gonna be recutting chips. All the more chances to deflect that tool. Deflection ends up in giving you chatter in the hole. It's not going to produce a nice straight thread. So we're gonna do everything we can to battle deflection. All right, so climb milling is preferred. There have been times where you may have wanted to conventional mill, uh, but those are very few and far uh, situations, maybe where you're going to be, uh, if you have a, a burr situation at the top of the part and you can't chamfer at the top of the part, maybe a conventional milling situation there. But I highly recommend all thread milling programs be climb milling. And if you take a look at Instacode, Instacode does automatically default to climb milling. It does give you the option to switch it over if you have a situation that you may feel it's necessary to conventional mill. All right, tool holding. Once again, let's talk about deflection. Anytime you're holding a thread mill, if you're in there with a collet, a collet is going to have a spring action. It's gonna allow that tool to move, to be deflected off of the part. Rigid tool holding is highly preferred. Hydraulic chucks, shrink fits. I prefer milling chucks for thread mills. Uh, even an end mill holder, if, if there's a situation where you don't have a milling chuck, you don't have a shrink fit, uh, or hydraulic chuck, you could always have a flat be put on the thread mill and put it in an end mill holder. At least it is rigid clamping. Stay away from collets in thread milling. All right, next let's talk about radial passes. So it's nothing more than if you're trying to end mill off a hundred thou into a part, okay? Depending on what the material is like to machine and how much material you're trying to remove, you're gonna probably wanna take multiple passes to remove that material. Thread milling is no different. You're removing a certain amount of material that is dependent on the threads per inch that you have. Obviously, uh, eight threads per inch versus 64, you're gonna have a lot more material to remove with that eight threads per inch. Okay, so the more material you have, then you're going to take a look at what is the material like to machine. Now, if that eight pitch is aluminum, it may not be uh, a bad idea to try it in one pass because it's easy to machine material. Now. 64 pitch, not a lot of material, but if it's 62 Rockwell, you may want to have a couple of passes to remove that material. So I always relate it to no different than if you're turning a piece of bar stock, how much material are you removing and what is the material like to machine? So thread milling is no different. In the pocket guide, we do give you examples and we talk about um, how many passes and really where those percentages should lie. And we also give suggestions based off of the thread pitch and the material that you're machining. So in the pocket guide, you can find that. To get your copy of the pocket guide, go to alliedmachine.com slash guide, and we can get you a copy of the thread milling pocket guide. All right, so radio passes, tool holding, the direction that you're, you're cutting that chip, so climb versus conventional milling, those are all things that are going to improve your chances of battling deflection. So I highly recommend climb milling. I highly recommend putting it in rigid tool holding. And I also recommend that you take a look at how many passes you're taking to remove that material. In this pocket guide, you also have a troubleshooting. A lot of the things you're gonna see that if you start seeing issues with the thread mill, excessive wear, chatter in the hole, a lot of these are always gonna go back to deflection. That's why I'm making sure that I drive that point home of the tool holding, the climb milling, and getting those extra passes in there if you really need it based off of your application. So you do have a troubleshooting guide. It's gonna walk you through, if you're, you're seeing this, here's, here's the reason why it's happening and here's how you can fix that. Okay, there's also a troubleshooting for your machine. So a lot of times it's just simple errors that are, are going to alarm out. For instance, having a, an RPM in the program that is too high for your machine. Simple fix, a lot of times though, people see the alarm code and think it has to do with the program. Nope, no different than normal. All right, so we have four demos today. We've gone over how does a thread mill work, some of the uh, benefits of using a thread mill versus a tap, and we've also talked about best practices. Let's get started into talking about the demos that we have today. I'm going to show you the tools that we're going to be using. We have, this is a one inch eight thread mill. This is solid carbide thread mill with TI-ALN coating. 
We're going to be running that a couple of times for you. This is a 3 8 24 thread mill. This is, has AM210 coating on it. This is our AccuThread line. And then last, we have AccuThread T3. This product line is designed to go into hardened materials and also really nasty to machine materials, such as high temp alloys, stainless steels, but this little thing can do um, into your low 60 Rockwell, no problem. All right, we have Rob Brown with us. Rob from the Training Lab is going to be walking you through those demos. So Rob, I'll let you take over from here. All right, hopefully my mic's on. I'm good to go, okay. All right, uh, good morning everybody. Uh, as Jamie said, we're going to uh, set up and run the thread mills. We've got four different demos that we're going to be running today. Uh, the first demo is really to kind of give you examples as to how a thread mill works. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut like a semi-circle. We're not going to cut like a full thread. And uh, the reason we're going to do that, so as the, the thread mill is coming in and doing its job, you can actually kind of see the path of travel for the thread mill itself. So you can see what it does whenever it goes through the cut. Uh, we're going to be using that one inch eight thread mill that Jamie was showing you a minute ago. Uh, we're actually going to do a two inch eight hole. And it's going to go into a piece of cast iron. Uh, and <clears throat> the cast iron is about 200 Brunel in hardness. And just to give you some background on the machine we're going to be running on today, it's a Kitamura Vertical Machining Center. It's a 30 horsepower machine with a, a maximum spindle speed of 10,000 RPM. Uh, for the uh, thread milling itself, uh, we're actually going to be doing this first one dry. Uh, so you can see the path of travel for the thread mill. Um, so there will be no coolant on the job. Once again, it's gray cast iron uh, with a, with a uh, one inch eight uh, size thread mill, but we're actually gonna do a two, eight, uh, two inch eight thread. So uh, the pre-drill hole or the, the semi-circle that we have to create, we're gonna use our revolution drill for that. Uh, we're gonna be running it at, uh, geez, I think uh, 650, sir. thanks Dave. 650 surface feet per minute and um, fourth out per rev. Uh, we're running a little bit lighter on the feed rate with this because of the fact since it's a pretty heavily interrupted cut, we're gonna minimize the amount of deflection we get out by running a lower feed rate. But we're here to talk about thread mills, so let's go ahead and get the, uh, the revolution drill part of this done so we can be ready to go in with the thread mills. So we're gonna watch this go real quick and then we'll uh, see what happens with the thread mill. I'm ready, Dave. <laughs> Again, we're going to come in dry with the tool and it's a heavy interruption so it's going to make a little bit of noise because we're basically cutting half a hole here so and with drilling it dry that uh, kind of amplifies that a little bit too we're just about done though there it goes okay so this would be basically like the pre-drilled hole uh, for the for the thread mill itself so now we're going to come in with that inch eight thread mill. And what you're going to want to see is, is the thread mill is going to come in, it's going to go to the bottom of the hole, and then it's going to do basically the equivalent of one revolution of a pass, and it's going to cut all the threads at once. So uh, whenever you're looking at the thread mill itself, the thread mill is actually just a serrated end mill. It's the path of travel that the thread mill takes that creates the thread, okay? That's, that's what creates that, okay? And uh, we're running this thread mill, 450 surface feet and two and a half thou per rev. And this is a two pass program. So it went in and it did the first pass. So here it comes for the second one. But as you can see, as it's going its cut, the thread mill starts to move up in Z. And that's what creates the actual helix of the thread. So the, unlike a tap, where a tap is, is, already has that helix built into it, a thread mill is just a serrated edge. So um, it's the motion of the machine you have to make sure that your machine has the ability to, you know, that the program is going to move in X, Y, and Z at the same time. Now, I'm not going to pull that part because since it was uh, drilled dry, uh, it's going to be super hot and take a little while to pull off. So what I have here is a part that we did whenever we were testing it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. So you can see, I can get it in the right spot here so you can see it around the graphics here. So this is the thread that we created. Okay. So basically the thread mill comes in and it creates the thread because as it's rotating around here at the same time it's moving up in Z so that's what creates the helix of the thread itself that's why I can use a uh, 
uh, the same thread mill to do either a right hand or a left hand thread because it's the program that's going to define that. Because if I want to do a right hand program, I'm going to thread from the bottom out. If I want to do a, a left hand program, I'm going to thread from the top down. Uh, because once again, it's the helix that's created by the motion of the machine that actually makes the, uh, the thread itself. The thread mill, what it does is it creates the, the shape of the thread. Uh, the actual threading is done via the program. Okay? So that Rob, was, I'm going to add in that it's a, uh, it's exactly down. the, sorry, yeah, on, it's exactly the pitch that it's moving up in the z-axis. Yeah, it goes because, up one yeah, pitch. Yeah, so if you didn't come up exactly one pitch in your z-axis, or if you're going down in your z-axis one pitch, if you're doing a left-handed thread, if you didn't do that, it wouldn't come back up and connect with that, that next thread up. That is very critical that your z-axis has to move one pitch in order for, as it's coming up, that it has to match up with the next thread above it. So, All sorry. right. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to run, uh, uh, we're going to actually do a 3 8 24 thread in a piece of 17-4 pH stainless. It's 32 Rockwell. Um, uh, what we want to show you here is cutter comp, uh, because as Jamie had talked about earlier, if you go and you cut your threads and it's uh, tight, I can just go in and, and comp the machine, in other words, change the position of the cutter to open it up to make it so my thread is the right size. As long as I don't take the, the part out of the machine, I can rethread that hole as many times as I want to, as long as it's still in the same setup. If I loosen that part up and move it just a little bit, I'll never get it back in the same position to be able to match everything up. But as long as everything's locked in the same place, I can go in and recut that as many times as I need to. So I can go in and I can cut it, take my gauge, ah, it's a little tight, I'm going to comp it out. Yeah, it's still a little, and then I cut it, I check it again, it's still a little tight, I can comp it again until I get it to the right place. And you would go through this whenever you're setting the job up, you know, the first hole, and once you get that done, you're going to comp it out, get it so you're getting the, the thread that you want, and then as the thread mill wears, uh, once that starts to tighten up again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to recomp it, and I'll keep doing that until the thread mill basically gets worn out. So. Uh, speed and feed we're going to be running, well, actually let's tell you what we're going to be doing first with the pre-drill for this. Uh, we are using a, an ASC320 solid carbide drill uh, that is a, looks like a 8.43 uh, millimeter diameter as the pre-drill. We're going to be running 120 surface feet and 4th thou per rev, uh, which equates to about 36 and a half meters a minute and 0 0.1 millimeters per rev. Uh, the RPM on it is uh, 1,381. So, uh, Dave, if you want to go ahead and get that ready to go. Now, when we did that cast iron part a minute ago, we drilled it completely dry so you can see the, the path of travel for that thread mill. For this one here, we're going to be running coolant. Uh, we're going to run uh, 300 PSI or about 21 bar of coolant uh, through the tool uh, to help evacuate the chip in the 17.4 pH stainless that's 32 Rockwell. Dave's got to turn on the, uh, the flood coolant whenever we come in with the thread mill. Uh, but we're going to do the pre-drill first, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do for the, um, for the thread mill itself. Okay? You ready, Dave? All right, let's do it. All right. So once again, this is 17.4 pH stainless at 32 Rockwell being drilled with an ASC320 solid carbide twist drill. Running at 120 feet and 4 thou, or about 36 and a half meters a minute and 0 0.1 millimeters per rev. Okay? So this is our pre-drilled hole. So once we're done with that, once we're there now, now we're gonna come in with the thread mill and we don't run uh, through coolant with the thread mill, we're gonna flood with this one, okay? But the thread mill we're gonna be using here is a TMUK 0375-24. So it is basically a thread mill that the smallest thread we can make with it would be a 3H24. Okay, it's going to chamfer at the top of the hole right now. But I gotta talk to you about this anyway. So this thread mill is a four fluted thread mill, solid carbide. Uh, since it is the AccuThread tool, it's coated with our AM210 coating. Speed and feed we're gonna run this is 150 surface feet a minute or 130, now that 137 isn't right. That's too fast for the meters per minute. It's 150 surface feet a minute and eight tenths per rev. Okay, we're gonna do uh, a three pass program because the hardness of this material kind of puts us in a position where we need to go and do multiple passes. Dave, you can go ahead and run it. It's going to take a couple of seconds here since it's got to run three passes anyway. Uh, the reason we want to run three passes is because if I tried to cut all of that 32 Rockwell material at once, what would happen is, is I would have too much deflection in the thread. 
and whenever the thread is going through there, I'd end up with a tapered thread. I might get a lot of chatter or something like that. So by doing it as a three-pass program, I get a much cleaner thread uh, in trying to machine this difficult to machine material. So this first pass is taking out half the cut. Whenever the second pass comes in, it's going to take out 25%, and then pass number three will take out the last 25%. Okay. So what it does is it goes and it does one pass and it goes back down, does one one pitch in Z axis, then goes back down and does that the third time, and then we should be able to check it. And uh, we're running this with zero comp right now, so it's just uh, uh, you know there's zero adjustment for the size of the of the thread itself, and if it works the way that it should, that should be a little bit tight for us, and we'll have to comp it out a little bit. Okay. So once this is done, I do have a thread gauge here. Make sure I'm looking at the right one, and we will go check it with a thread gauge. Okay. So once Dave's done blowing all the cooling off of it here, we're going to go and check it. So here we go with the with the go side of the thread gauge. Okay, and you can see I can get maybe uh, not even quite a quarter of a turn. Okay, so the go the go gauge side of this doesn't fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to comp it out, and what we're going to comp it is uh, I think we're doing it two and a half thou on diameter. Yeah, is what we're going to comp this. Uh, so in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of tell the machine that the thread mill itself is two and a half thou smaller in diameter than what it actually is. So it's going to change the position where the thread mill is going to meet the wall of that part by two and a half thou. So it's actually going to make a two and a half thou in diameter larger thread, which hopefully will allow the go gauge to fit, but maybe not the, we don't want the no go gauge to fit. Okay. So now whenever this is doing it, realistically, the first two passes aren't going to be touching anything. The reason why we don't go and only run just the third pass is by the time I would go and alter the program to make it a single pass program again, um, I just let it run because it's going to be shorter to do this than it is anything else. So it'll run through those three passes again. Whenever that's done, we'll go back at it with the go gauge and hopefully it'll fit this time. And then if it does, uh, then at that point, I'm getting a good thread. Uh, it meets my specification. So then at that point, uh, I can uh, in, in a real-world scenario, I could go ahead and begin production. Whenever it starts to tighten back up again, I would go and recomp that thread mill to open it back up again and then let it shrink as it wears and then open it up until it gets to the point where it uh, starts to affect its ability to cut well. Okay? So. And in this case, you did a 50, a 75, and a 100% pass. Yeah. So one thing that I always try to recommend is that you don't want to do anything under 50% pass. The reason is the, the thread itself is tapered. Therefore, if you get into doing a 25% pass or a 30% pass, you're just scratching the surface. You need to get the thread mill uh, deeper into the groove, the, the, the 60 degree angle of the thread pitch. You need to get it deeper into that so that it actually can remove some material. So I really don't like to do anything below 50%. The other thing is that you have tap drill size is also accommodating for uh, taking some of that, uh, that material away as well. So stay above 50% whenever you're talking about multiple passes. Uh, 50, 75, 100% is really nice for three passes. So. Okay, let's check it out. Hopefully it fits this time. So we're gonna go back at it with the go gauge. Okay. If I can get it to not cross thread on me, there we go. See now the go gauge goes in. All right, so we'll thread it in a little bit, kind of wiggle it around. It's got a, a pretty decent fit to it. Okay. But what I want to do then is since my go gauge fits, now I gotta check my no-go to make sure that the no-go gauge doesn't fit. And the no-go shouldn't go more than about a half a turn maximum. Okay, so it should start to thread in. But you can see I only get about a quarter turn with the no-go gauge here. So what that's telling me is is the threads in between the, the go and the no-go side of it. I've got a good thread here, I'm ready to go. So in a production environment, I'd go ahead and start running this until my, my go gauge starts to tighten up again and I would comp it out another thou or so and then check the wear as we go. So uh, one of the, that's why I say one of the nice things about a thread mill, whenever I'm, I'm doing training with people with this, one of the cool things about a thread mill uh, versus a tap is, is if I do need to have like a specific, let's say I need to oversize it because I'm going to chrome plate this area and I want to make sure that the threads are going to fit after the chrome gets put on. Uh, if I'm doing tapping, I got to go buy a special tap with a thread mill. I'm just going to open it up more, knowing that whenever the whatever process is going to be done later, uh, that process is going to bring it back to size. So, uh, you know, that's that's what's really nice about it. And once again, as long as I don't move that hole, 
uh, I can comp, 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 comp until I get the size that I want. Okay? So for demo number three, we're going to move on. Uh, demo number three, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to show you our T3 thread mill, which is that 3 2 thread mill. And the reason why the 3 2 thread mill is there, and I'll just kind of hold up, you know, this is that 3 H24 here, okay? Whenever it does its cut, it does, it, all the threads are cutting at the same time, right? Whenever it creates that thread. With a 3 2 thread mill, I only have uh, actually only one thread in contact at the time. The other two threads are cleaning up as we go. And the reason we do that is to reduce the side pressure on the tool, to try to minimize taper and those kind of things. So it's really good for deeper threads uh, and harder material. Uh, with a 3 2 thread mill, we can actually uh, uh, thread up to 60 Rockwell. So uh, you can't do that with a regular thread mill because you get way too much deflection out of it. And it would end up uh, creating an issue where I'd end up with tapered threads and they wouldn't pass inspection. So a 3 2 thread mill will do that for us. So the material we're going to be machining here today. Uh, is going to be uh, H13 tool steel that's heat treated to, uh, it says 42 to 45 Rockwell, it's actually on the, uh, on the 45 Rockwell side of it from a hardness standpoint. Um, so what we're going to do is come in with that and we're going to do that in a single pass. Okay, so remember whenever we did the 17.4 we did it in three passes to try to minimize that taper. With the 3 2 thread mill I can actually come in and I can do that all in one pass. Alright, so speeds and feeds we're going to run the pre-drill. Once again, we're going to use an 8.5 millimeter uh, diameter ASC 320 solid carbide drill. We're going to run it at 90 surface feet a minute and 8, or I'm sorry, 3 thou per rev, which is uh, 27 meters a minute and uh, 0.08 millimeters per revolution. Uh, so Dave, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and drill that. Okay. Uh, and that's going uh, through tool, cooling at 300 PSI or about 21 bar. So once again, the material is H13 tool steel. And we're going to say it's right around 45 Rockwell in hardness. Uh, once again, a, a, a 3 2 thread mill can actually go uh, up to about 60 Rockwell, but uh, the material that I have here is it, it's 45. So that's the hardest stuff that I have here in the lab that I can show you. So here we go. So this is just the, the pre drill. Okay, so it's going to come in and drill a hole into that material, and then we're going to swap that out for the thread mill. And then we'll do the same thing with this one that we did with that 3H24. We're going to go and we'll gauge the hole. Now this one should already be comp, so I should be able to make a good, a good thread uh, the first time because we've already shown you how that uh, cutter comp works. And, uh, and we'll double check that and uh, see how that goes. So Dave's got to switch his program around here real quick. So while he's doing that, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with the thread mill. If you want to change the graphic. Okay. So for the, for the thread mill itself, we're going to use a TM10150-3T2X. So what that tells us is it's a 3-2 thread mill, okay? Uh, it's a 2 times D length, okay? And uh, the speed and feed we're going to run this is 161 surface feet per minute, which is about 49 meters a minute, uh, 16 tenths per rev, or per tooth, uh, which is 0 0.04 millimeters per tooth, okay? And once again, this is going to do it in a single program. Now, since I've only got one tooth doing the cut as it goes, it is actually a slower program than what you would have if I was using a regular thread mill because I would have all the teeth cutting at once. So that's why it is actually making the thread right now, it's just a slower progression, okay? But whenever this is done, I should have a finished part in a singular pass, okay? And we should be not too far from being done right now. Right, Dave? Okay. So whenever this gets done, like I said, we'll go ahead and clean the part off a little bit so we can uh, uh, check it with the gauge and see how that works out. It looks like we're just about there. These are, are offered in a two times D and a three times D. So for those longer applications, we do have those and up to one inch eight size. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. So just like we did before, we'll go with the go gauge first to make sure it fits. Okay, so there's the go gauge, and we give it a little wiggle, and it's actually fairly tight, so it's, it's probably towards the lower side of that. And then we're going to flip it around and try the no-go gauge. And the no-go gauge should only fit a maximum of about a half a turn. And I can't even get that far into it, I go about a quarter turn, and that's about it. So that's a good thread. Perfect. So in this application, we would now say we've got ourselves a good part, and we're ready to go. So um, once again, what's really nice about that that 
T3 thread mill is the fact that we can go and we can run uh, extremely hard material uh, because as you know, anytime you heat treat something, things move around a little bit, things like that. So if you're doing high precision work and you want to make sure those threads are in just the right spot and they're not moving and swelling and shrinking and whatever else happens whenever they do the heat treating operation, you can actually come in and you can heat treat it after or you can uh, thread it after it's been heat treated. Uh, so that way you get exactly the thread that you want because there's going to be no alteration uh, to the base material after that gets done. Okay? So, we're going to move on to our last demo for you here today. We're going to do a large diameter uh, thread. We're going to go back and remember that first demo we did that was uh, the half piece. We did a 2 inch 8 uh, thread. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do that in a, in a whole application. So we're going to go back into uh, gray cast iron, but instead of doing a half cut, it's actually going to be a regular cut for this, so we can check it, okay? So, uh, with that, uh, uh, with the pre-drill, we're going to do that with a revolution drill again. It's a set at an inch 875 diameter, and since we're not running through that interruption, you can see our feed rate's going to be a bit higher. So we're running 650 surface feet per minute, which is about 198 meters a minute, 8 thou per rev, which is 0 0.2 millimeters per minute, running 300 PSI a corner, about 21 bar through the tool. And once again, it's set to one inch, 875 diameter. So once Dave's ready to go here, we'll go ahead and drill that. And it'll go fairly quickly with getting the pre-drilled hole done. And then we're gonna come in with that inch eight thread mill. Okay, so even though it's made for a minimum of an inch eight, we're actually gonna create a two inch eight because I can always go bigger. So that's what we're gonna do here. So once Dave's ready, we're gonna go ahead and go. <laughs> he's almost there. He's got to make sure he's got it all. We want to make sure we get the settings right, because if it doesn't, then, uh, you know, we got a whole new problem. You get to see live whenever a tool fails. <laughs> we prefer that it doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. Looks like Dave's about ready. Maybe. Not yet. No pressure, Dave. Just, you know, everybody here waiting on you, that's all. Okay, um, so once again, what we're gonna do, uh, you know, the revolution drill, it's the same drill that we had set up for that first application. It's just, once again, instead of going through half a hole, we're gonna go through the whole thing this time. So, but that's why we're able to run that eighth thou per rev instead of fourth thou per rev, because I'm drilling the hole uh, in its entirety instead of just half of it, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit loud because we're taking out a lot of material here, okay? I wasn't kidding you. All right, but this goes pretty quick, so it'll be over here in just a second. There you go. So the pre-hole, the pre-drilled hole is complete. So now we're going to come in with that one-inch eight thread mill, but the thread we're actually going to create is going to be a two-inch eight thread. Okay. That's another thing that's nice about a thread mill is as long as the pitch and the style of the thread is exactly the same, I can actually use that same thread mill to do various different sizes. Okay. So here we go with the two-inch eight. Uh, speed and feed we're running is uh, 450 surface feet per minute, which is about 137 meters a minute. Uh, two and a half valve per tooth, which is 0 0.06 millimeters per tooth. Uh, once again, we're running a flood. And this is a two-pass program, so we do a 66% pass and then a finish pass in that gray cast iron. Okay, then whenever that's done, we'll go ahead and run the gauge in it and check it and see how it goes. And then uh, that should be about it for today. Okay, it looks like we're about done now. There you go. So we'll give Dave the chance to kind of clean that off real quick so we can get in there with the gauge and take a look at it. But, uh, you know, just like we did before, a little bigger gauge, but we're going to go in and we're going to check the go side. And then if the go fits, we'll check it with the no-go side to make sure that it's uh, in between the sizes what's acceptable for tolerance. Okay, so here we go with the go gauge. Okay. She's a little tight. I got a burr on there. Let's see if I can get it to start without picking up that burr. Now yeah, we need to comp a little more. So let's take it out another couple thou. We're going to do a comp on this one so I can get it to fit. And I got a burr on the edge of that too. We're going to need to clean off. So we're going to do another run with this. Unanticipated, we put some, uh, whenever we did our test piece here right before the show started, it fit fine. but. Things change. It's live, so. You betcha. So Things might as well change. go well for us, right? <laughs>
So Jamie, you can tap dance while Dave's doing his offset change. <laughs> I would rather see you try. <laughs> All right. So, uh, wait a minute, let me get on the right side of things here. There we go. Figure out which side I need to go to. Stupid graphics. All right. So, uh, now obviously, once again, one of the nice things about a thread mill is, is even though that was tight, Dave can go in and he's, how much are you going to comp it, Dave? On radial? Okay, so we're going to make the whole three thou bigger. So, because the offset that he puts in is a radial offset. So he's going to come in and, and do the, uh, the offset. He did a, a thou and a half, so it's going to make it so it, it thinks that that tool is three thou smaller than it is. So once again, when it comes in to do the first pass, it's going to make no contact. When it comes in to do the second pass is when it will go in and it's basically just going to shave a little bit off of it, and then we'll recheck it again and see that the gauge fits. Okay. So while you're talking about cutter compensation, the one thing we should talk about is our program coming out of Instacode is programmed based off of the center of the tool. That means that the, the helical interpolation that that tool is doing is based off of the, the center of the tool. What that means at your machine is that you're not going to need to put a cutter diameter in your cutter diameter spot and your offset page. You can take and use the cutter diameter spot for your compensation. So depending on how the program is that you're using, but our Instacode is gonna program based off of the center of the tool. Therefore, on your offset page, you are going to want to have, uh, using the cutter diameter spot, or using right. the, the cutter diameter spot, you would put your cutter compensation right there. So no need to put in the cutter diameter of the tool. So go ahead. So I, All right. Go ahead, I'll let you go now. Okay, so I'm here finished. we go, we're gonna check it again. Let's see if we can get her to start this time. Ah, that's much better. Okay, so by putting that comp in there, now you can see I can spin it right down in there. Okay, it's got a little bit of a wiggle, but not very much. Okay, and actually, it's not bad for it to have a little bit of that, because remember, the thread mill is always going to, as it runs, it's going to get smaller, so it's going to tighten up the thread as it wears, as long as the no-go doesn't fit. Okay, so let's see how that goes. And you can see, I get about... A little over a quarter, between a quarter and a half turn, and it's that's as far in as that's going to go. So we now have a good thread. So even though we had to comp it and we weren't really planning to, um, it works. So that's all the demos that we have. Now what I do want to do is uh, let me grab a part here because this would be yep. the three H twenty four that we ran. So what I want to show you is if I can get it to so you can see it here well is the quality of the thread that it creates. Okay. Because one of the key things that you want to look for whenever you're looking to see is the thread good is how much chatter it has. Okay, and you can see that thread looks nice and clean. That's the way that we want it. So looking at the H13, so this is what was done with that T3 that we talked about. Okay, so you can see the quality of the thread there. Nice, clean cut. Okay, that looks really nice as well. No chatter on the threads there. And then uh, if I can get Dave to pop out that one inch eight, and he's working on it right now, I'll do the same thing with that under the camera, and we'll show that to you as well. Okay? So, are oh, you going to blow it off, are you? Okay. You're going to blow some of the coolant off of it so you can see it a little bit better. Okay? Now, this is gray cast iron, so the finish on it's going to be a little bit different than what we saw with the stainless steel and the, and the uh, tool steel. Okay? Usually it doesn't come out quite as shiny. And you can see it's got a little bit of chatter, but it's not too bad. But you also, for the you also added that one thou pass, which was a, essentially a spring pass. That's right. Okay, so that's the quality of the thread that it produces. So that's all the demos that we have for you today. So Jamie, if you want to kind of close it out here. Yeah, absolutely. So Thanks. we've talked a couple of times about Instacode. One thing to remember is that if you want to learn more about Instacode, you can go to Allied Tool Academy. There is a segment on Instacode, so you can learn more about how to navigate through that. Also, don't forget your reference guide. So if you want a thread milling pocket guide, you can get one of those by going to alliedmachine.com slash guide. So you can fill in your information. We'll make sure that you get a pocket guide. It has everything from tap drill charts in it to uh, troubleshooting information to how many passes and just a lot of good general information and starting speeds and feeds for our product line. So don't forget to do that. And once again, Instacode, handy tool out there. If you want to learn more about it, you can do that through Allied Tool Academy. 
It is also available on our website uh, under our online tools that we have. So you can get the Instacode, do the download version, put it on a, a, a jump drive and take it to any uh, computer out on the shop floor and be able to write programs on the fly right there by your machine. So it's a really nice thing about it. Also, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thank you very much for joining us with Allied Live today for Thread Milling. Have a great day.